Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition, and in today's video, we're going to focus on a commonly prescribed antibiotic called metronidazole, otherwise known as Flagyl. So in this video, we'll focus on some of the adverse events that can be caused or side effects that are associated with this particular kind of medication. We'll look at how it can produce some really nasty symptoms in some people who have only taken it for a very short period of time. Alternatively, it also applies to people who've taken it for a long period of time as well. We'll also be looking at the potential relationship that this antibiotic has with underlying thiamine deficiency. It turns out that there is a close connection between metronidazole and a thiamine analog, which may induce a deficiency in certain people. It may be enough to tip someone over the edge. And there have actually been uh, many people who have addressed metronidazole toxicity with supplemental thiamine. So without further ado, let's go into some of the details. So first of all, if we look at the medical uses of flagell, it's particularly effective against a variety of different bacteria and protozoa. We don't necessarily need to know exactly what those are at the moment, but if we look at what it's practically prescribed for, well, it's, it's, it's prescribed for bacterial vaginosis, various types of dental infections, including periodontitis, uh, H. pylori, other gut infections, including blastocystis hominis parasites, uh, Diantamoeba fragilis, Clostridia. It's, um, it's used in the Lyme community. It's used as a, one of the therapies against chronic Lyme disease and other stealth infections. This is amongst many other things. It's prescribed for um, lots of stuff, basically. If we look at the mechanism of action, well, it diffuses across the cell membrane of anaerobic microorganisms, it disrupts cell energy metabolism, and basically generates a bunch of free radicals which go on to destroy bacterial DNA, and this is why it is generally very effective. It's thought that this doesn't necessarily have any problematic effects for human beings. However, um, it turns out that there are of lots of different side effects which people can develop, and this can affect many different types of systems. So we have the brain, uh, including with cognition. People may feel confused. They may get cognitive decline. They may develop dysautonomia, so problems with the autonomic nervous system, severe headaches, for instance. They may get peripheral neuropathy and paresthesias. They can develop gastrointestinal issues, including IBS-type symptoms, chronic constipation, um, chronic abdominal pain. This can affect the bladder, so people may go on to develop what looks like a chronic urinary tract infection or loss of neurological bladder control. It also affects some of the other systems, including the heart, including the respiratory system. Now, for the most part, these symptoms can be resolved after um, reducing the medication or avoiding the medication completely. So when someone discontinues the medication, most of the side effects in the majority of people disappear. However, there are a subset of people who do not improve. In fact, many of the symptoms, they continue or they might even get worse. And unfortunately, I work with quite a few of these people, I've seen several of them in clinical practice, who for them, flagell was ultimately the straw that broke the camel's back. There is a condition which is called metronidazole-induced encephalopathy. So this can occur with both acute and long-term use. Now, the symptoms include an inability to balance, walk in a straight line, inability to speak or vocalize properly, visual disturbances, and seizures. Now, as I just said, usually this is reversible when someone discontinues the drug, but in some cases, it's not. Now, here are a couple of research papers. The first one, case report on central nervous system complications of metronidazole. It's a, a case looking at a 22-year-old male. Um, he developed a variety of central neurological symptoms, including ataxia and seizure. Um, his symptoms improved very gradually after cessation of metronidazole. 
another case report. Um, it's looking at the relationship between metronidazole and peripheral neuropathy, which is very interesting. And another one which demonstrated what was likely the case that metronidazole induced pancreatitis in one individual. This was a 25-year-old 20, female. Um, she prescribed metronidazole. She was on a third round of it, and this was for a periodontal abscess. Now, there was none of the typical historical antecedents to developing pancreatitis. So they came to the conclusion that since the pancreatitis improved drastically when she'd stopped the metronidazole, this was likely the only cause that they could think of. The mechanisms of toxicity in the human body, well, it's not actually very well known. Uh, it's thought that there's a couple of things that might be involved here. One of those is that RNA and DNA um, is bound by metabolites of the drug, and this can inhibit neuronal protein synthesis. Another one is that it's modulating um, reception of gamma aminobutyric acid, which is one of the inhibitory neurotransmitters. Finally, there is uh, some evidence that metronidazole, whether it's the drug or the metabolites of the drug, can oxidize catecholamines and produce these radicals, which are called quinone radicals. And they essentially can destroy cell membranes and destroy cell DNA and basically cause cell, de cell death. Where it gets really interesting is a paper which was published in 1987, and this was showing that metronidazole was converted or could be converted via an enzyme to an analog of thiamine, a thiamine analog. So an analog generally means um, a chemical which is quite structurally similar, but which which does not have the same effect, and so. If we look at what this actually does, this particular analog, which metronidazole might go on to produce, well, this is going to be inhibiting an enzyme inside the cell, which is called thiamine pyrophosphokinase. This particular enzyme is responsible for taking the inactive thiamine that we derive from food, activating it so that it can then be used inside the cell to participate in biochemical reactions. So it's thought that this is potentially one of the mechanisms by which metronidazole exerts its toxicity. So we see this kind of picture that's been laid out by some of the researchers who've been uh, studying this, is this idea of a chronic subclinical insufficiency. So someone may go a very long time, they may have mild symptoms, or may even be asymptomatic. The symptoms or the symptoms of deficiency had not yet manifested. And yet a round of flagell, so this could be two to three weeks, it might be two months. This is enough to tip them over the edge. So someone goes from a mostly functional state to all of a sudden tumbling down into some kind of a, a metabolic crisis. Now, there is a community of people online who have basically described this exact thing. And I've seen it time and time again, is people who have been kind of on the edge, skirting the edge of health, right? They may not be 100% optimal, but they are by no means suffering from any kind of uh, identifiable neurological condition. They take flagell and all of a sudden they develop such strange symptoms which affect multiple different systems, neurological type symptoms, paresthesias, dizziness, vertigo, dysautonomia. Uh, POTS type symptoms, severe fatigue, cardiovascular issues, gastrointestinal issues. So they suddenly lose control of their gut. They might become chronically constipated, develop reflux, develop all of these other kinds of symptoms. And yet when they go to their conventional doctor, they're told that there is no relationship. Now, some of the researchers have theorized that what this drug might be doing in some people, and this might be one of the reasons why it only affects certain people, is that it is either reinforcing or potentially unmasking an underlying insufficiency or deficiency of thiamine, which had not yet become significant enough to produce major symptom changes. Now, if we look at the symptoms, it's quite fascinating, the overlap. Now, 
there's this concept of metronidazole toxicity or metronidazole induced encephalopathy. But if we look at all of the symptoms, the side effects of metronidazole, we see that they are remarkably similar to neurological cardiovascular beriberi or Wernicke's encephalopathy, both of which are well established conditions which are caused by severe thiamine deficiency. And if you watch any of my other videos, you will recognize many of these symptoms. I've spoken uh, at length about the various manifestations of a thiamine deficiency. And interestingly, um, this condition ticks most of the boxes. The paper was published in 2020, not long ago, and it's titled Thiamine Deficiency and Oxidative Stress Induced by Prolonged Metronidazole Therapy Can Explain Its Side Effects of Neurotoxicity and Infertility. Isn't that interesting? They go on to show, uh, this was in animals, but they essentially found that the oxidative stress and decreased thiamine levels caused by metronidazole could probably explain the neurotoxicity which is associated with this medication. Another um, paper titled Metronidazole Induced and Wernicke Encephalopathy, two different entities sharing, this, sharing the same metabolic pathway. They speculate that many of the symptoms, many of the biochemical changes, the pathological changes that occur with metronidazole-induced encephalopathy are very, simple, uh, very similar to Wernicke's encephalopathy. One more paper titled Thymid Deficiency in Metronidazole-Induced Encephalopathy, A Metabolic Correlation. So we see there's a picture here. Now, interestingly, this case study, this showed that um, there was a 77-year-old male who'd been on Flagyl for 40 plus days. He developed ataxia, brain lesions, dystagmus, ophthalmoplegia, and dysarthria. Now, interestingly, what they did was they administered 1,000 milligrams of thiamine and they discontinued the flagell from day 43. Now, almost immediately after starting the thiamine, um, they saw a drastic improvement in many of the symptoms. Now, ordinarily, well, this would be considered metronidazole-induced toxicity, but this was primarily what they think was a severe thiamine deficiency, and it seemed to coincide with taking metronidazole. Now, we know that metronidazole is associated with this thiamine analog. We know that it can potentially go on to produce a thiamine analog. Therefore, it would make logical sense that in someone who is already insufficient, if they have suboptimal status anyway, then taking flagell for any prolonged period of time might be enough to tip them over the edge. Now, as I said, there is a community of people online. There's a Facebook group specifically dedicated to this topic. The website Hormones Matter has documented many cases and there's several articles on there on this particular topic. Many people have treated this condition using high doses of thiamine, particularly the um, bioavailable form thiamine tetrahydrofurfal disulfide that's contained within either Thiamax or Alithiamine. Now, this particular form is very effective at getting into the brain and when taken with the correct cofactors, seems to be remarkably effective at improving many of the symptoms which were caused or triggered by flagell. So if you or anyone that you know has taken flagell, gotten horrible symptoms that didn't go away when you stopped taking it, then it's possible that this could apply to you. Now, it might be a really good idea to consider taking thiamine, attempting it, and taking it with the right cofactors. Now, there's actually a community support network online. It's a Facebook group, and it's called Metronidazole Flagell Toxicity Support Group. Now, there's 1,500 members on there who have experienced very similar things. They've experienced many of the horrific symptoms that can go along with an adverse event associated with taking flagell. And many of them have also found great benefits from using the right kinds of thiamine and the right kinds of supplements to um, bring them out of that, that kind of condition. So I really advise anyone who this applies to, to check that group out. Otherwise, if you like this video and you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my page. You can find me on Facebook as EO Nutrition. You find my website, www.eonutrition.co.uk. 
Stay tuned because I will be making more videos like this in the future. And if you'd like to learn more about thiamine, check out my channel. And I've got lots of videos up on there about that topic. So thank you and see you next time.